Today I'm going to be installing an OEM nav unit on my 2008 Saab 93 Turbo X. Back at Saab Owners Convention last year, I had a subscriber, Muhammad, gift me a nav unit that he was going to put in his car, but he actually sold the car or something came up and he didn't need it anymore, so he gifted it to me. And me being me, I have procrastinated quite a while on getting it into the car, but I finally have the parts that I need to get it to work in this car. So I'll go ahead and list the three parts that I bought down below. Let me also mention that this has the 13 speaker Bose sound system in it and that these interiors are for 07 to 11 Saab 93s. If you have an 03 to 06, this is not going to work. I feel like that's pretty obvious and should go without saying, but it's something I still want to mention because I feel like there's someone out there that's still going to ask me, so... It's only gonna work if you have an 07 to 11, and there are some other parts that you can get. There's other videos out there that you can watch if you're interested, but to get it to work and function well enough, there were three little cables, adapters, and whatnot that I bought. Uh, they're all sitting inside right now. I will leave a link to all three of them in the description. Together they cost me no more than like 30 or $40, so not bad at all. So here is that nav unit, which of course looks super beautiful and is going to look so much better than what's in the car right now. And some of you might question, why not just get an aftermarket head unit that has Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, all this other stuff, and to that I have to say, well that sounds great, that's not only one, more expensive, and two, more work, but it's not factory. Like, I just like how this looks. That's really the main reason why I'm doing it. I think that it just, it looks a lot nicer than any aftermarket head unit that you would buy. So really just the aesthetics of it alone are really the big, are, are really the big reasons. I mean, it looks OEM because it is OEM. I'll talk more about the features and everything once I get it installed and married to the car and everything. Uh, but for now, I'm going to work on getting the old radio out and I'm going to put this down before I drop it and ruin this entire video. Removing the physical radio from the car is not difficult. And I repeat, it is not difficult. It's literally two bolts and like three connectors. But to get to those, you have to remove this air vent, which is, from what I've heard, very difficult. So I've watched a couple of videos on it, and from what I saw, there are six clips that you basically have to push in simultaneously, three on the bottom, three on the top, and then it'll kind of just like come out all in one piece. So the trick that I learned from watching that video is get some kind of like plastic pry tool to make a little bit of space in here and then once you've done that just stick a bunch of cards in there right where the tabs are and you can kind of pry the tabs up from there and slowly kind of wiggle it out i'm not sure how well this is going to turn out when i try and film it but i'll still try and probably fail Pretty certain that's one. So these are just kind of like pushing the tabs up right now. And I only have a fourth card unless I want to start using debit cards or credit cards, which I don't really want to do, or my driver's license. Ones on the bottom are supposedly harder. So the video I watched, which I guess I should probably link to give that guy some sort of shout out, basically has you do the three bottom ones first, get them in like this, and then slide that first top one in right in this corner. You'll, you should have a little bit of room if you did it right. And now I guess I need to uh, go get some more cards. Okay. So now that the hard part is done, you'll see that there are two little T20, I believe they are, T20 or T25 most likely, torque screws holding the radio in right there. Just like that, comes right out. So now there are three connectors to it, one here, one here, and one here. I'm gonna work on getting those out now and then the uh, old radio will be completely out. So now that the old radio is out, I'm gonna actually head over to my buddy Anthony's house because he's going to help me install the new nav unit and help me marry it with his tech too. So. Let me dump with you guys when I'm over there ready to install the new one. Tomorrow. So I'm in like Saab Wonderland right now. But, um, so we have the first adapter goes into this white piece right here and runs 
all the way here into this adapter, which plugs into the nav unit right here. And these two are the old connectors for the old radio. These two are not going to be used. And lastly, we have our GPS antenna, which is going to plug into the blue outlet right there. And we're probably just going to mount that on top of the radio. And then of course we have a ground wire here, so Anthony just went to get a 10 millimeter and we're going to ground it right on there. So the antenna is right in there. I just kind of mounted the air vent to make sure there was room, but it's about going to be sitting right there. We're going to tie this extra wire up and we'll be good to put it in. All right, so everything is hooked up. Let's see. Hey, there we go. So we have the theft locked activated message, which means it's time to do some tech two stuff. And I guess I'm gonna learn to do this myself. So this should be fun. So enter. Yep. And where am I going from here? Diagnostics. 2008. Yep. 9-3. You're gonna go to go exit. Oh. Gonna go. Hit right arrow, hit again, all, and then enter, right arrow, up, enter. So we have to get security access first. I have to go take it, get security access, then we'll come back, and then we can marry it, and boom, uh. your bitch is on. Okay, turn key to lock. And what, turn back on? It'll tell you. Oh, okay. Okay, power button, bottom right. Get that next. Two, unplug the yellow cord. Unplug the power cord from the Tech 2. No good. You see this guy running? Matt's a dick. I said Matt's a dick. Matt Nicolay of Esau Parts is a dick. <laughs> you should put that. In. I'll, I'll put it in there. Add remove. Control modules. EHU, which is Entertainment Head Unit. EHU. Or you can hit the right arrow. Uh, good. Too late. Almost yeah. there. Add. Add. Yeah. So this is the part where it erases your ECU completely, and you die. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> okay. Adding unit. Yep, there we go. Got the time right there. So, sedan. Serial position. <laughs> Why does that matter? I don't know. You have the 13, right? Bows? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And okay. Top right. Yep. Sorry. I'm so used to doing it with my eyes closed. And that's sick. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then key to lock. Key to lock. I'm just gonna say remove key. There you go, so. Already done? Yep. Okay, start your car. Carrie Underwood, right? <laughs> That's our shit, man. <laughs> Your favorite movies and TV shows. So it all comes in good. Dude, this is so freaking outdated. Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> it is cool. And then how so, menu? How do I switch to aux? Oh, uh, whoa. Yeah. Cool, huh? So the aux won't show up until you put a cord in. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right, guys. So there we go. The interior just looks so much better with this, despite. The uh, everything being so outdated with the maps, you can't ignore the fact that that's awesome right there when you start it. So there you have it guys, that is how you install a OEM nav unit in a 2007-11 Saab 9.3. Uh, a lot of people generally when they go from the stock stereo that I had before 
to something uh, nicer, they'll usually just go aftermarket, which I can understand, but for those that like the OEM feel, the OEM look, you can't go wrong with this, although it's outdated. I really, I've, I've used it for about a week so far. It's been about a week since I've had it in and I have really enjoyed it. Couple things I do wanna mention though, if you watch other videos, which I would recommend doing before you install this, you might also wanna get a VSS or a vehicle speed sensor and to do that, you're gonna to have to do some additional wiring. I chose not to do that because the nav unit, the GPS updates every second or so. So while it's not super smooth, me moving across the screen, uh, on the nav, it's good enough for me and I'm completely happy with it. So that might be something that you wanna consider. Also, because I still have the amp from the old stereo in there, the loudness of it is about half of what it should be. So if I turn this on full blast, it'll only play about half as loud as it should. So I'm gonna to have to do some work now and locate a new amp, which should just be plug and play. So yeah, besides that, those are really the only comments I have to make on it so far. I, I really like it. I think I might do a full video going through it and showing all the features and stuff like that because while there isn't a whole lot, it's uh, too much to put at the end of this video, I figure. And also you might be noticing a new shirt for you 900 or classic sob lovers out there. I now have a C900 shirt, which you can purchase at the link. Well, not directly at the top of the description because the parts I use for this will be at the top, but right below that, check out this new shirt and support the channel. I really love it, very comfortable. But with that being said, that's it for today, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. time.